welcome to the pod uh, we are at 15th episode yeah 15 episodes 7 months in and we're currently at the 15th episode right now so let's not waste any time with the introduction um, i uh, the guest that i'm bringing in today uh, was supposed to be on the podcast something like 2 3 months ago maybe 8th or 9th episode but uh, scheduling issues has uh, delayed the episode and uh, finally uh, out of the blue he's here uh, let's welcome uh, my cousin uh, sai krishna what is up welcome to the pod hi ragu hi. the medium of conversation is english only right yes english english telugu hindi whatever we come we can i can mix i'll tell you what the agenda of the pod is okay uh, although i said that there is no agenda uh, mm. see this is a, a very basic conversation with with two people so basically a conversation that i want to have with people that are very close to me my friends mm. or people in some other domains that i'm interested in mm. so we had stand up comedians in the past three episodes because i was interested in how wanted to learn about that mm. industry mm. and uh, for the 10 episodes i had my friends mm. we were talking random basically yeah. random bullshit yeah. so it's just with the cameras and some glam sham yeah so yeah. the same thing uh, we when we made we speak a lot about f1 we speak about the world you you mm. you educate me a lot in politics and world politics for that matter and yeah. uh, i just want to do it on camera that's it uh, yeah. gain some views out of it <laughs> let's do it yeah. let's try so um no inda go question adu you asked me a question right yeah. it just said uh, no propaganda uh-huh. yes my question to you is who decides what is propaganda <laughs> uh, if so if if it's a democracy and there are 100 people and then let's say 20 people feel something that's being said is propaganda and 80 people say it's not is it propaganda or is it not well it's their po- it's a point of view for, for it's everyone is entitled to their point of view but the or the way the river flows is what the majority generally thinks about the subject yeah so that's what no propaganda and i thought i like <laughs> yeah we'll talk about f1 ragu first yes yes so I, uh, the whole reason i want to talk about f1 with you is that out of all the people that i connect with f1 you're the only one who has who's been watching it since basically like 20 years i believe from more, since more than that more than that maybe yeah. michael schumacher yeah. there i watch michael schumacher yeah that's how i my entire so see i am I, you know you know i come from narsrobe it's a small yes. town right even i knew who michael schumacher was yeah and i think in my age i would have probably been the only guy who would have watched f1 in astrobe just because i was bored and like skipping through channels Channel. there is star sports and star sports showed okay i think star sports only i think yeah yeah it was, was star, star sports in back in no no star sports 10 sports only uh, okay this is all pre 10 sports was okay. i am okay okay this is before christ yeah so uh, <laughs> so yeah I watched Michael Schumacher the car was sexy it was a nice amazing ferrari and michael schumacher was like the god in god on wheels and i had a fascination for vehicles from my childhood I used to play with cars and stuff so why not you know not why not it was really entertaining and you know cars were going very fast 350 360 kmph you know and one more thing is that uh, then they had v12s v12 yes So now we have, I think, V6. V6 hybrid, that too. Yeah. So the engine is engine, right? The yeah. sound of the car yeah. comes from the engine. Yes. So they sounded really sweet. Yeah. When they like whispered that. Yeah, the, there are videos on YouTube. I, I don't want to, you know, make that sound <laughs> because I'll not make it accurately. <laughs> But I've seen your know, YouTube videos with, uh, I think, uh, Spa so. is the uh, Spa is the track, I believe. There's this audience shooting from a grandstand and. Uh, the cars started from the uh, pit lane so you could hear the voice the roar of the engine from all the way after the, even 3 4 turns you could still hear the, that uh, sound the volume of the sound the intensity of the sound which is again com- in comparison to today's cars it's not that much so the glory days is, is what uh, they were and uh, the sound lingered in your ears yeah the sound was not like it's you heard a loud sound and then it's gone it's it's this used to the the after 
uh, there's a nice very high pitched uh, tune yeah. which comes they, they call it something like when you gay down at uh, yeah. blown diffuser diffuser mm. blown diffuser yeah the blown diffuser sounds were amazing back in the day yeah so the yeah and the technology we'll talk but i'll tell you my uh, impression was you know people think about max verstappen now and they see how ruthless he is in races so uh, you know he can even crash into you mm-hmm. so he is not at the same level as michael schumacher was michael schumacher in this assholery was like at the, the peak rock. he he doesn't he is the like in terms of competitive spirit he has to win at any cost mm-hmm. win at any cost mentality and even the rules i believe were very not as uh, strict as right now i believe because you could uh, no the rules were always track there and the, the, the this thing is controlled by this thing called fia yeah so fia uh, used to have rules i think then it was this guy you know that uh, the old guy i think he died now i think i don't know bernie ecclestone is alive yeah bernie ecclestone uh, yeah, yeah. i think he is i think he is he is, he is yeah he is, like with he sunglasses is, he is. and all like very blonde the hair green hat No, no, blonde hair green, and yeah, uh, he's, he's uh, large sunglasses lips yeah. in monaco yeah, yeah, yeah that guy i think that he was the guy who was running the show but they always had rules and see the rules are it's, same I'm for everyone i think it's not as stringent as it is today i believe mm. because i've seen videos where people were passing uh, without any track limits there were no track limits back in the day yeah. it's now yeah. it's very see technically yes yeah. yeah more regulations as sport grows they added more more uh, that's that i agree Uh, and you, you didn't see uh, drivers complaining like oh you he didn't leave me space uh, every time you have to leave me space like people currently they complain when they're taking a turn like you know i was at the apex uh, it's my it's my line but back in the day you could be as raw as possible just finish first so that's what no, i not really see there was this okay. is not go karting hmm. so uh, f1 from whenever i remember always there is a lot of clean racing lot of people who used to take nice clean race lines there might not be as many rules saying if you cross the curb mm. uh, then your time will be uh, deleted. not uh, deleted stuff deleted. like that probably they the technology to measure that also still did not exist yeah then. makes sense as technology came and when people realized that people were taking undue advantage the guys who were making the rules they'll then say you know uh, let's have the change rule see cry babies were always cry babies but i just wanted to talk more around uh, say i always used to tell you my mo- my favorite driver is uh, alonso fernando alonso yeah i'll tell you i i tell you why i like him <laughs> yeah so as uh, when i started watching schumacher with the red sexy red car in the red suit the biggest uh, i should say the alpha yeah the alpha on the track you know uh, people used to say actually ayrton senna was even a bigger alpha than michael schumacher but i never watched ayrton senna he died on the track in monza yeah. there was a crash i think yeah. he died so he was like was answer. michael racing when ayrton ah yeah he, he was, was there he in was, the he race yeah, he won the race that day when he died uh, i don't know whether he won uh, or not like but that. he was there like uh, michael schumacher uh, was uh, there uh, uh, uh. but if you ask like formula drivers who their favorite hero was it was like ayrton everyone ayrton. will be ayrton senna yeah so uh, but then coming to michael schumacher as i told you uh, the way you know you you remember the the last uh, couple of till couple of years ago uh, hamilton was winning he was just winning yeah. every race hamilton wins uh, that there's this meme also no ham bot wet <laughs> ham bot uh, wet uh, ham yeah. bot wet yes uh, yeah ham, hamilton botas and uh, vettel were sap uh, vettel or vettel. Yeah, yeah vettel yeah vettel was vettel was the first so he came later on later later yeah yeah so uh, yeah so he was like that and uh, then there came a guy who was you know who had like have had this carefree attitude nice flowing hair and you know <laughs> that dead devil kind of a who was an underdog mm. was in a car which was very tem- you know temperamental which some days when it worked was good but when it didn't work uh, it was He's not good it. that so this attribute no which i just told you is one major difference between watching formula 1 then and watching it now is because on the right day when all of their components came together a team like williams also could win yeah so everyone like it's So on some days they will fail miserably so it, there was no i i would say predictability th- this monotonity in 
if someone had higher budget and had understood the rules well yeah. they will put together a well engineered car which is uh, fun is as is i would say higher than even aerospace engineering or, yeah. you know you you can send rockets the kind of engineering that's needed to send rockets is you know f1 demands similar yes. uh, levels of uh, in today's age yeah it does yeah, yeah. and there was no cost cap also i'm sorry to interrupt but there was a I cost don't know. cap i don't day. remember if i was not that uh, you know as you very young no i don't remember okay, okay. yeah but uh, yes, my okay. point being uh, you know coming back to just uh, shumaker he was winning uh, really you know like every race even though there was competitiveness the competitiveness was behind him and then there came a guy who came and you know who uh, really went about uh, beating him and uh, you know there is one incident i think in uh, suzuka if i'm so see if, if you want to fact check fact check <laughs> but i don't you should like with me some things are fuzzy okay, yeah, but yeah. i have got it, got it. some memory of the incident and what i took away from it yeah yeah so i think in suzuka or some place shumaker and this guy new guy uh, probably one or two seasons old was coming and they were racing uh, side by side and uh, at i think 300 310 kmph uh, shumaker pushes uh, mm-hmm. alonso off track and this guy had such huge diamond balls boss he went off track didn't slow down didn't break he overtook michael shumaker and won the race okay 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 that shows you know yeah, yeah, yeah. the the you know grit and the competitive nature of wanting to yeah i mean 20 years win. down the lane he's still doing it yeah yeah that's yeah. what's crazy about it so what i liked about alonso is like you might have watched this uh, one f1 movie that has come no what's uh, it called rush 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 you watch rush yeah yeah so Fuck. in that there is one guy who's like the mechanical uh, i think the what's his nigel name was that? nigel uh, nigel uh, mansell no no not no, nigel no, mansell what's his name are this guy who got his uh, face and all burnt yeah. no with red bull for a long and, time and 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 uh, what's his name dude did he uh, die james hunt was this guy no no so this so i i would say no 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 kada ippudu so hunt you know alonso used to drive like hunt on it on like even if you even now you see he is now so old and if you give him a wet track mm mm-hmm, yeah even if the car is slow he'll always that always shows a very you know Experience. driver with ex- ex- excellent skill yeah his his driving is always very smooth always through through the curves the way he drives and always whenever he overtakes also there is that amount of it's not like you know you can cut the other person off but you can do it in a in a in a more uh, sporty com- way competitive sporty way yeah at the end of the day you are you know that's what that's something i really don't like about verstappen also is uh, you know I'll, i like this i like this <laughs> please <laughs> is you can race but these are cars that are driving at 200 250 kmph anyone who has actually driven a car and knows how 200 kmph feels like okay should be at least you know or at least 100 kmph feels like you can at least multiply the effect and understand yeah. right yeah. yeah you know you go faster you will it's very hard to concentrate and stuff and at those you should be respectful at that speeds and because the other person is also at that speed uh, so well faltu mein you just uh, because you want to win i know i understand like i understand i respect the competitive the competitiveness uh, with which you want to win but i subscribe to the philosophy of winning with a bit more honor but didn't every guy in their prime it uh, was established at his first 3 years of championship so we had vettel this is not black and white <laughs> what i'm saying is not black and white yeah. you should look at it in shades of gray okay i would prefer a person who tends to do it often in a more gentlemanly way so i like raikkonen also even mm-hmm. though raikkonen only won one championship mm-hmm. but raikkonen there were i think two seasons where he drove with lotus yeah i think uh, that there's a crazy crazy story as yeah. well each point uh, he was yeah, yeah. supposed to be given yeah. 10000 dollars he basically made <laughs> lotus bankrupt, bankrupt. Yeah, yeah yeah that was crazy <laughs> yeah because that you know those finish drivers they have a unique uh, uh, talent yeah. like because they do a lot of karting yeah and very dangerous sport huh karting yeah. 
people should not try that with our uh, swifts and uh, <laughs> espressos and all nano stuff you will die yeah. don't do it there's a so, video of uh, raikunen very crashes in uh, monac <laughs> monaco and uh, he just leaves the car on road and mm-hmm. he goes to his yak yak and just sit mm-hmm. there just have it has a drink he doesn't even go into the pit lane there's a crazy video of that like mm-hmm. it shows how you know you, you can't say careless or it's like you know it doesn't matter for him like he won he won he did not win it doesn't matter for him so it shows how cool and composed he is in such situations and that or he doesn't give a fuck boss yeah that i feel is the most <laughs> he is like no fucks given attitude in life or there is this uh, movie where the character is called the dude what is the name of the movie i'm not able to dude the, the hero is name hero is the dude okay it's it's a really no agent no 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 fucks given um, the peak of no fucks given attitude like the person how he floats through life i'll probably later i'll send you the yeah. link i'm not able to recall now but let's come back to formula 1 yeah 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 so i told you so this is like this is how i think of how things are cars always fascinated me or i want to ask you a question you tell me yeah. why do you like formula 1 um it was the see i've watched many sports uh, through my life so i started with cricket uh, cricket was like you know every every ball happens and you're like waiting for the next ball to happen so there was a interval like after every over there's an interval where you can just go take a shower eat something you can get something uh, football was the same sometimes you, you you got bored watching football so there was a phase of my life where cricket was the peak then football was the peak i could really not understand the vast nature of football so mm-hmm. like fuck it then i stumbled on uh, Uh, drive to survive so i was a uh, formula 1 and i felt like every second has something happening on the entire track so it's either in the front either in the back so the whole two hours that i'm watching formula 1 i am invested in it there's nothing else happening in my world mm-hmm. so that was my window to an escape that was my escape to something uh, happiness you could say that so uh, that is the Uh, you could say that's the adrenaline rush i get you know mm. that two hours of where everything if something all the other happening i even subscribe to the fnt the fnt we were it shows the stats it shows so you your reach so <laughs> <laughs> no, i i shared it with three people so yeah <laughs> so uh, yeah uh, you could see the stats behind like even even though the live telecast is showing verstappen you could see what's happening with haas behind who's yeah. fighting with haas yeah, you could yeah, see the time yeah. difference the uh, purple sectors yellow sectors so and the learning factor again so yeah. going back technical there's so many things you could learn about the car there's uh, mm. ecu what is the mgk uh, a small change in your aerodynamics could impact so big on a car so big on a race and the craziest thing that i was surprised when i in formula 1 was you you have to change the car based on the track and the weather conditions every weekend mm. so the level of precision that they do in simulators is what surprised me and that got me hooked on it's like it's, it's like a drug to me right now i can't wait for february 29 something like that i guess yeah i yeah. can't wait for the season to start again yeah. and for verstappen to win again so yeah uh, but again yeah i am a drive to survive uh, guy mm. uh, i came from that netflix bot got mm. me into formula 1 but that did not stop me from learning what the, the about the greats of formula 1 such yeah. as the michael but but yeah, i learned a little bit about michael mm-hmm. but i've learned a lot about lewis mm-hmm. the seven years of his reign uh with a little bit of nico's uh, nico and uh, hamilton's fight so i'm a little bit sad that i missed that prime formula 1 era of lewis's prime uh i it's it's i, I can't i'm unable to defend uh, right now and yeah. every time on reddit i'm uh, there's a yeah. sub called formula dank So it's know. an amazing sub. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think you, we all spoke know. about this. Yeah. So uh, people are uh, defending Hamilton, but I have no idea how. I can't relate to that. I can't relate to the fact. See, that with Hamilton, no. The only uh, season which was interesting was Hamilton versus Nico, Nico Rosberg, yeah. which was like the craziest, amazing season. But other than that, it would have been a bit more. More of what you now see with uh, Verstappen is what used to happen. Yeah. Sergio Perez never trying to really putting up a challenge, but at least in that case, Bottas at one more than what the percentage of Bottas has wins, but more than what uh, you know Sergio Perez yeah, yeah, now yeah, does. Honestly, yeah. So Bottas is a very good driver. Uh, 
uh, he's also a finished guy yeah he's uh, so and uh, once again the similar attitude that you see in Mr. Uh, this guy raikana no yeah what brought me into formula 1 and what i think about formula 1 i'll tell you i always interest was like very i fa- cars fascinated me from my childhood like used to draw cars play with cars remote cars yeah break it down into parts <laughs> uh, try yeah, to build my own that. cars <laughs> yeah okay try to build my own cars by you know buying a motor sticking it on something buying wheels you know did all of that when i was young and then as i uh, kept knowing more about cars and stuff so uh, then came to know that there is one sport called formula 1 by by you know chancing Scroll across uh, yeah. to sport and it like really interested me because these were cars that were racing so the build of the car the the amount of uh, track specific customization that you do now so i was just talking about why how i got into formula 1 so you know cars you the know, customization yeah yeah uh, no so the amount of customization that uh, there is now it, it it wasn't like that in the past this is the amount of customization for each race for okay. each condition because the technology to or the wind tunnels to analyze tracks and wind conditions and now uh, on that day whether it is going to rain weather hmm. predictions this kind of a stuff never yeah. happened the only thing only variable that car uh, you know this car teams had was changing tires or uh, probably bringing uh, bringing upgrades uh, changing tires and then i think uh, for a while there was mid race uh, fueling also yeah yeah there was i think my verstappen's dad had a accident uh, while mid racing fuel once which, okay is that yeah yeah it, it happened is that so? yeah. i don't know yeah uh, so this is how i got into uh, formula 1 and after a while like uh, i i really liked alonso after that and i watched all of his ferrari days and then you showed me his video of his uh, starts yeah, uh, yeah. that's yeah. A, that's when yeah. i started to observe more of his uh, starts in live races there is no one you know first up uh, that's guy alonso is now i think 44 i don't know yeah. oldest guy in the car yeah. i bet no, no one on the grid starts better than alonso you could say that yeah yeah you watch his career yeah entire career ricardo for a while uh, was very good at starts yes when he was at red bull and when he was the number one driver yeah. uh, when verstappen was just joined and then i when think the daniel second season Kivyat, have, daniel kvyat and uh, ricardo were yeah yeah no verstappen paid. also was there but even during mm. that season yeah, yeah. also uh, ricardo was a good starter he was known for being the mm. king of late breaking ricardo yeah 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 i've seen a few videos of him and that that's crazy and it mm. it shows in his mclaren the mm. current mclaren days as well but certain just, kind of driving style is needed for certain yes. cars yeah so ricardo's is more uh, let's say drifty kind of a uh-huh. the how you probably drift a car going late into the car, uh, corner yeah. brake hard turn rapidly so that the car you know so you know the different styles different drivers but It's coming back after all what's what i started to feel uh, this is like once uh, the the entire uh, more aerodynamics have come into play now i feel like uh, formula 1 cars are more like predictable you, you watched uh, Guardians of the Galaxy yeah, yeah. volume 2 volume 2 yes yes yeah there's this is uh, woman no who is the sister of Gamora, Gamora yeah the ro- uh, yeah the, ro- ro- the robotic- green one is Gamora no yeah yeah ah. gamora ah. so nebula ha- nebula so so is nebula a human being or that being anymore <laughs> that's the paradox yeah. so is that a car anymore now where you change each each race mm. yeah oh. but to be honest That's an interesting question to ask. Like, is is the car that you win your last champ, the last race, is the same that you won your first race? Yeah, the probably season? the only thing that might be common is where your ass is sat, which yeah. is the that uh, your driver that, yeah, yes. seat. That's interesting. That's an interesting question. Yes, and probably the chassis will be similar, and then but every component you will probably. Change. It's like that paradox, you know. If you change a ship, uh, once mm. a ship is broken down, if you change, if you change the entire. Uh, hall of it yeah, is it still a sh- same ship no it's not yeah so it's the same paradox that uh, yeah. this is oh that's interesting what's your, have you attended a race any live race no no i always want to yeah. uh, not for the kavle i doubt let's see hopefully sometime singapore is close and i think now they are uh, thinking of uh, uh, hosting one in ahmedabad it seems 
Yeah, they're, uh, they're trying to build a track. Yeah. But we already have both. Why, why uh, host another is a question. So like yeah, I think uh, it's more has got to do with uh, financial viability, Ravi. See, it's expensive. What is F one fundamentally? If you think about it, it's at, an entertainment. A very, it's a weekend entertainment. It's a it's a giant traveling circus. <laughs> yeah, isn't it so? It is. It is. So. basically from point a to point b early now now at least the travel schedule is even a little bit logical earlier the travel schedule was not well planned where they would criss cross the entire world in a in a more uh, i should say uh, natural a less kind of efficient a, way. a more efficient way they cross the world now earlier the one used to race used to be in brazil and then the next race used Some to be you are coming to somewhere europe. in the europe yeah. and you know the scheduling was not uh, very nice now at least they brought the american yeah, yeah. races to one one week and one month in a yeah. one whole month so now these guys bought it no this liberty media liberty bought media, it yeah. so they are a bit more smart about this they are marketing it well through drive to survive yeah so they yeah. have a 2030 ta- yeah. target of being so they have understood or... like probably people like me who have like been watching uh, might not be enough for them to really make mm-hmm. a profit out they would rather go for a Newer target audience. They want to they want to Americanize the sport. Uh, yeah, because American media is what dominates yes. the world, no? So yeah. that's their narrative that gets pushed all over anyway. So yeah. I mean, I mean, look at me. I got into Formula One because of Drive to Survive. Mm-hmm. So I am thankful for that. Although mm-hmm. the OG fans like you might uh, say that, "Are you the newer, you're the newer people, you're the newer generation? You had no idea what the actual soul of Formula One is." No, I so, don't think like that, Raghu. Okay. I, you know. I'll give you one more one more example of cricket. My thinking in this is sim- is different. Everything has to evolve. Formula One is evolving, and it's okay. You know, that's I still once in a while if there is a good race, I keep watching. But I hark like for example, when I you uh, know bike nature come up, initially I learned it on an RX hundred. Hmm. I still have very good memories of an RX hundred. Okay, yeah. It revs really well. Yeah. But. it has much less power than the modern day bikes which are four stroke and would probably be more efficient so now i can probably buy another bike which can give me take me from place a to place b in a faster more efficient way but i'll have memories of that but does that does that mean that is a superior hmm. bike than this hmm. okay. then that's a question your heart has to answer which will not where logic will not apply <laughs> It makes sense. Similarly, I'll give you an example of cricket. I consider, I think, it is a fact. Sachin Tendulkar is the god of cricket. Mm, yeah. Okay. Agree. But you might agree. Let's say if someone younger than you now, who is twelve years, thirteen years mm. old, who might have never seen Tendulkar play. Yeah, they're like Dhoni. For them, it's Dhoni. Ah. Uh, For them, probably it might be Kohli also. Yeah. They're, like I keep seeing people fighting on Twitter, Kohli fans, uh, Rohit Sharma fans with some Gandhi Gandhi stuff and whatever. Huh. But you know they might argue very passionately uh, of why they think they start saying Virat Kohli is bigger than Sachin Tendulkar. Actually, he's not. But it's you know, just that's, a stance. That's because people, you know, the. impact someone makes is very related to the times they are in yeah you you like yourself in that era mm. you you just bring that emotion to you drag it down to yeah. this time uh, and that just elevates it so chinna pudu polam pakkana kuchoni chettu meeda reekayalu kosukoni tinnamu yeah is a very a good memory yeah no which people also need that no in life to i don't want to make your podcast philosophical <laughs> <laughs> you can make it what it's it's so, a clay it's a clay you can mold mm-hmm. it as you so, want it i mean, i i think like this now yeah. ki everything has to evolve so cricket has now changed now people don't play so much odi cricket anymore but mm-hmm. when i was growing up odi cricket was the craze yeah. because otherwise you had to watch five days of boredom where people used to just defend 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 you know now at least like after kohli coming into uh, captain uh, taking over the captaincy P- india is now like playing much more aggressively yeah. than it used to and kohli is a much better test captain than dhoni test captain yeah for sure because I, i'm a little bit uh, less nahi nahi no, uh, so it's it's a, it's, a, it's a very gray area for me i have no idea mm. hey, compare uh, the win percentages uh, you know it's so it's so stark uh, that uh, 
I think Dhoni's win percentage is similar or lower than Rahul Dravid's. But then that was a different era. And in that era, the differential between Sachin Tendulkar and the rest of the group around him was so humongous. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, I used to cry when I used to get out, man. <laughs> 2003 World Cup was such a... 2020... 2003, okay. 23, uh, we lost, right? Yes. 23 is nothing worse. Okay. 2003, because 23, we we had a powerful team. We, the, our people like, except the final, hmm. every match our people steamrolled the opposition. Right? It was a clear whitewash. Huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so powerful, like no one could touch. It's just... That day, you know, that because that is sport, mm. so it happens. But 2003, I think Sachin Tendulkar played. People now watching this might have thought uh, Virat Kohli has played out of his skin. You know, he played so well. Of course, he played well. I don't deny. Okay, but the differential between Virat Kohli and the rest of the team around him, Rohit Sharma played. According to me, yeah. Rohit Sharma played the best. It's because of him that India actually, because he was going out, taking risks and playing without putting any price on the wicket, go out and hit every ball. That was the philosophy. Yeah. Okay. And KL Rahul played well too. Yes. Shreyas played well. Okay. Go back to 2003 World Cup. Sachin Tendulkar stand, you know, stands so, so above everyone else that who were the other people? Yeah, Sauro Ganguly was there. Ah, okay. Dhoni was, was there. Dhoni was not here. Yuvraj Singh was there. So Dhoni uh, must have been there as well. Dhoni, Dhoni was not there. Dhoni okay. started from 2007 or 2006, 2006, 5, 6, I think. Okay. After that, he started. So. Can I somewhat? So yeah, I, I was saying, like, that's what made, like, a lot of people talk about Bradman and how Bradman is. Uh, so great because once again the differential he had an average of so and so but no one saw him playing no one saw him like yeah and there is this you know if you go and ask a a fair uh, guy let's say <laughs> someone like Kevin Peterson you go and ask he'll tell you Tendulkar is the greatest cricketer who, who has ever played the sport of cricket but let's say if you ask a English guy or a Australian guy, hmm. they would say Brad, uh, Tendulkar is great, but he is there along with Bradman is what they'll say. But you know, in 1900s, what pads they had, what pads <laughs> they had, like what? Of course, he might have been an excellent talent, but do you, I'm quite sure if Donald Bradman would have faced Shoaib Akhtar, Brett Lee, Alan Donald, these Alan Donald. Uh, these kinds of ballers, no? He would not have had that such an average. And then, who were the guys who were playing cricket? Only them, no? Those yeah, white guys yeah, were yeah, playing cricket. Yeah. Like, Australia used to play with England. England used to play with <laughs> Australia. Once they play there, once they play here, Chuma Chuma, that's, a, that's all we They think they're the king of the world. Yeah. Yeah. Because... I mean, they still do with the Ashes. I mean, they play... They, they, they make a, such a big marketing out of Ashes these days. And it feels cricket like... Cricket is not... English sport anymore. Yeah, exactly. I think world has now come to understand yeah. that India yeah. owns cricket. Yeah. Now, if people start crying and cribbing about, uh, you know, uh, how we, we were the, probably in the future, in 10 years, uh, you know, everyone will unanimously say Tendulkar is the greatest cricketer to have lived and not Bradman because I think the, the center of gravity has shifted. <laughs> That's what I should yeah. How did we come into cricket? Like uh, we're comparing with uh, evolution. We're comparing people across eras. Yeah. And how different eras had different things. And I just gave you an example of Tendulkar and Kohli and uh, uh, yes. you know your Roy Sharma and all of these guys. Yeah. Uh, l l let's go back to a little bit about Formula One because yeah, that's sure. that's very interesting to uh, mm -hmm. have a conversation on. Uh, your favorite track? Favorite track and why? I like Spa. Yeah. yeah. Oroj. Yeah. The iconic Oroj. Yeah. 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 The, Spa is amazing. The, like, I think, the, I, I, I still remember the first time when I saw it, like when Schumacher was racing. So, uh, the curve, the way it goes uh, about, I, yeah. that still always uh, stayed in my head. So, yeah. It's, yeah. 
I I I But now the sport is so costly Raghu that uh, you know we can just now only see and watch the best thing that you can probably do if you have the money is like go to dubai dubai auto world probably hire one uh, bmw m2 competition or m3 competition yeah which is track focused you know do you think yas marina the yas marina not yas marina okay yes, they will not allow you on yas marina okay or you have to be like dubai shake rich to be allowed on <laughs> yas marina which you are not so <laughs> yeah. let's not I was, I was uh, like, okay, plan check them on JP. So I was taking a financial. So it just the basic ticket costs around thirty five thousand or something. I'm quoting. Dirhams. No, thirty five thousand Indian rupees low. Yeah. The with basic ticket, you can't see the car. Ant exactly. Not see the car. So uh, that was uh, not even a sitting area. Like, kuchhi kuch na bola gaya. It was some garden area. Like you can have, you have access to stay in that garden mm-hmm. area, and you can look at the track. And that costs like thirty five thousand. And you know what? You'll go there, no. What you will be seeing is cars will be whizzing by you for a microsecond. <laughs> you can't even like it will be a pink blur. Yeah. There is no pink car. No, is there a pink car? Uh, no. pink it is. Yeah. Uh, Williams is pink, huh? No. No. B W T. Yeah. Uh, Alpine. Alpine, Alpine is, pink. is pink. Yeah, yeah. Pink and blue. Yeah. Pink and French blue. guys always have nice unique colors. Huh? In the yeah. earlier Renault, Renault also had unique colors. Renault had yellow, like yeah, this yeah. bright yellow. It was like yeah. yeah. Even before that, in the past also, they had like very unique uh, yeah. colors, which I thought is like crazy. Yeah. So 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 it's Alonso for you. Alonso is your guy. Yeah. So I think that's what. Yeah. Uh, um, as you grow older, you'll realize also. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I am rooting. Like you, there's one. Uh, there's one heroine who would have. made that first uh, you know you saw and you like went wow right something that will like go and touch <laughs> so for me that was alonso and uh, my my liking him has been vindicated with his uh, performance uh, mm-hmm. across uh, different he he went and did uh, he did lima uh, lamans also he did yeah he won lamans he won lamans he won the triple crown He no, won the triple. No, no, no. There's he, one more. No, India. Indy five hundred. Indy five hundred. He has not won that. He won. He won no, Indy five hundred. No, no, no. He didn't. Okay, did he get away? He tried. So one race or something, he skipped when he was. The reason why he went to McLaren, even though they had a shit car, mm-hmm. was because they had a very competitive Indy five hundred. Indy team. Okay. So they said, "We'll give you a chance to win," and he was actually very close, but I don't think he won. I have a reason. Some some. I think he won Dakar. I I think. Oh, he did Dakar, good. Right? I think so. I don't know, but he has won three things. Okay. But then, a crowd won't tell you. Like, some people say this, some people say that. Like, yeah. Dude, crazy fact. Uh, Dakar, the last twenty twenty four Dakar. Carlos Sainz's father, who's sixty years old, he won. He finished yeah. Dakar. Yeah, yeah. He's sixty years old, and he just uh, he's still racing in Dakar. So people love to drive, man. Oh, wow. Driving is amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah I means, I like driving. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I remember you having uh, after the first the first car that I don't I know what you why car, the toy. current the current car I drive. I bought it only because of a gearbox technology called DSG. Uh-huh. I bought it in two thousand sixteen. So it's the dual clutch. Uh, yeah, and dual clutch automatic was first developed for Formula One. Yeah. So for me, Formula One always represented the pinnacle of engineering that a car can have. both in terms of aerodynamics brakes tires engine recovery systems hybrids whatever that there is now you know the pinnacle of what the uh, the you know, or rather a lot of car companies continued to invest in formula 1 because all of those technologies developed in It's formula 1 yeah. had a uh, trickle down effect yeah so dsg is one such uh, technology which had a trickle down effect and no i i have a skoda now so yeah. i never liked skoda i always thought it's a it's not a great company had high maintenance and uh, you know uh, it's not uh, uh, you know probably buying a maruti or a uh, probably a honda is much more sensible but uh, i the, that was the only car which was offering dsg at uh, mm-hmm. that price i and in diesel so i had a lot of roaming around to do went and bought it and like yeah it's been a journey yeah yeah now everybody is offering dsc mm. at this yeah. yeah nothing and, beats dsc yeah because for at a at a 
let's say at a system level itself it's more efficient so the um, uh, the one thing that i observed with your car and other uh, automatic cars is the change in gears based on your throttle input yeah so uh, i pushed it i pushed uh, over with ankuta <coughs> i tried to push it at mm. least uh, i don't remember but uh, i could feel the gear change kada so yeah. i could see at what point the gear is changing so usually uh, diesel low 1800 low mm. change out but based on my throttle input it even it rose up till 2000 3000 4000 ko touch ayindi which was not data uh, no i drove mahindra xuv or something mm. i could see na kavalsin time la change avatledu whereas in a dsg although it's na chethlo em ledu it was changing yeah. i could feel the throttle input it's a good tech cost yeah. tech uh one yeah and a lot of high maintenance again dsc ka now it's not so yeah. new cars yours were yeah yeah a little bit yeah. high maintenance kuda em kadu you have to with dsg you know with, with the with the consumer versions of dsg that we have you should not launch the car hmm yeah okay if you want longevity of your dsg launching a torque converter or a cvt is okay okay will not cause so much damage to your clutch whereas launching a dsg especially the ones that is available in budget cars now is not a good idea even the newer ones you could yes, say yes. like the vertus dsg yeah, yeah, okay yeah. because all these are dry clutches vertus dsg to you should not launch <laughs> okay and <coughs> what generally happens is all these nibbas who get the car <laughs> of their dads or some friends or some cousins yeah. the first thing these guys do is a drag race <laughs> and probably take a phone shoot the video <laughs> you know i and I, i mean i didn't launch a car by the way so <laughs> ah, i pushed I, it on the highway yeah. i pushed it a lot uh, you, on the orr you you can drive it very fast yeah dsg is not to launch i said not to launch yeah but if you want like it is for there are two kinds of people ragu in, in who like cars hmm. there are people who who like precision there is no over spinning of wheels because spinning of wheels is not efficient hmm. that's how formula 1 thinks but it gives you the yeah. rush the little yeah. rush the spin it will give you a lot of rush and it will burn your pocket also <laughs> bloody because yeah. the tire is burnt no yeah. the, all the smoke is what it's your tire literally you know uh, <laughs> becoming smoke <laughs> because of high temperatures yeah is anthe yeah so my point is you can you know you if it has to launch it has to launch without wheel spin and all but it's not a good idea to launch uh, our consumer dcts He'll probably let's say you can launch an octavia with uh, much more confidence or with a superb mm-hmm. with a much more confidence or a mercedes or a bmw which also offer bmw does not offer a dct i think it, they offer a torque converter i don't know yeah i have driven the, is the i've driven this uh, audi a6 yeah something What i don't know technology to the, the i could clearly feel a difference from i uh, the rapid and the yeah, of course the csd it was amazing dude it was it was crazy how it was launching on the I, i i did not have time to do it on orr but just on this this flyover i should not have done it but i just had it in my hand and there was a clear road and fuck yeah. it was it was crazy I, I, i there's no words that i can explain yeah because that is the most premium car that i've drove so it was amazing yeah. it, it felt amazing Audi so if you think more about cars also what do these brands represent if you if you ever think about it there is a unique personality they have mm. Audi is very technology mm. Mm. technology features you know uh Mercedes more about comfort and you know elegance and yeah. that's why Mercedes is priced higher also yeah uh looks looking very premium you know the design language Audi is very techno very Uh, let's say nerdy looking than huh. bmw what could bmw you is what it? ultimate driving machine <laughs> is what bmw is yeah. yeah it's really nice to drive amazing uh, to drive didn't get the chance yet yeah. so very very you know low maintenance also than the other thing but doesn't ride as well as the other two yeah uh, depending on what's your dream car i used to have see one car i thought which when i saw for the first time and like fell oh, i thought wow is bugatti veyron okay i okay. mean pretty i mean pretty high standards for a bugatti veyron like too much e road like bugatti konjamaina we need to 
सी सर ओके अरे यार अप टिल देन वी आर सीइंग ऑल कार्स एंड देन दिस बगर्स बुगाटी केम एंड दे सेड ओके वी विल फकिंग गिव यू अ कार विद 1000 एचपी 1000 एचपी या द मैक्सिमम एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ द अदर गाइस वर ऑफरिंग अ 600 650 700 100 दे सेड ओके स्क्रू यू ऑल नाउ इफ यू ड्राइव इट हैज अ टॉप स्पीड ऑफ व्हाटएवर 400 But if you drive at that 400, your tires will only last for no. Your tank will last for only 12 kilometers or something like that, exactly. or 12 minutes or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I know that. I heard this stat. And then your tires will last only like some uh, Kilo- very limited, very kilometer. less number of kilometers. Yeah. But yeah, what a car! Yeah, you looked at it and you you I wanted to like take. A, I actually had a poster of that for on in my room for a while. Okay. But now I don't have a dream car per se. uh so what and, I, and there's something that can be a daily driver or something that can be put up you have a rapid if you can up, your dream car can be something that can be easily bought there is no dream ragu <laughs> i have what i have now all right this is the philosophical section of the podcast now <laughs> <laughs> i have what i have now okay so in the future if i have if i feel like uh, i'm there's something uh, i'm you know it's not comfortable or it's feeling short changed it's nice to drive ragu yeah Even today, it feels like butter. I did a six hundred. I did a Hyderabad to Bangalore in two days. Yeah. Uh, up and down, just me driving. Oh, it felt amazing. Yeah, yeah, this skill was good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I took this. I think XUV three hundred this skill. It was good. It was good. Uh, I mean, people warned me like you know, Arey, it's a nine-hour drive. You'll be so tired. Uh, how can you drive for that long? Take a break, no. Who is yeah. asking you to like yeah. drive? You know. Then you know, th- that's when I felt like you know even if I didn't take a break, which it up I didn't take a break. I, I took very less breaks than I did uh, while going. That's when I realized it's not in uh, your fatigueness or something like it's like it's in my mind. Okay, point of time though. Okay, I can in uh, two hours I'll put in a chest tano because I like driving. I mean, for the people who had to drive because they don't like driving, they might feel like you know, alright, yeah. it's a long drive, it's a long drive. Yeah. But because I like driving, because I want to drive, there was the fatigueness. Yeah, was a little bit less. So that's when I realized for that road trip. But uh, then also you asked my dream car, no? Huh. Actually, if if I ever like make it, I'll probably buy a Rolls Royce. Are you're the second person to say that, and I'm surprised to why I want to know why Rolls Royce. It's it's not fast. Spend some because... time, spend some time hmm. watching the the uh, uh, the product videos or advertisements of. Let's say the car video of let's say what watch Mercedes GLS, hmm. GLE, GLC. Watch Rolls Royce. Rolls Royce advertisements or promotional material. They don't have a single word being spoken in their ad. It's just a symphony musical playing with camera just panning over the hmm. this thing and then you know showing the interior and how classy it is. I was uh, speaking to somebody. Not even this. a single word, Raghu. You yeah. go back home, watch, and then watch other. There are other ads, like, yeah, yeah. There are other car ads which are very nice. But one one more company I really like, which I think is not offering uh, the entire range in India, is Honda. Honda's cars are also really well engineered. They, you know, uh, uh, the Japanese have uh, a very unique way of approaching things, which is different from the way Germans do it. the yeah. europeans do it yeah and honda is the pinnacle honda engines are gems yeah i heard yeah. gems yeah. i have a uh, you know you know even the bike not no no not the let's say the unicorn uh, 150 commuter segment hmm. just one step above if you even look at the highness which is like the bullet yeah uh, and then they have more right they have the africa twin they have 500x yeah, yeah. uh, now they have launched something new also the engines are Just makhan man. Just you rev. You want to rev, and <laughs> because of that, you'll get less mileage. <laughs> then, then. You see an empty road, and your foot automatically. <laughs> yeah. The way it, it's not just about uh, what I realize is it's not just about speed now. It's about the way the speed is built up. Yeah. Because you can't drive like I can. My if you even if your car goes to two hundred, two fifty, three hundred, whatever. What roads do we have for two hundred? Ah, where do you drive? <laughs> you can't drive anywhere. Yeah. So you know, if the speed limit is 120, you can go up to 120. But the way you go to 120 in an empty stretch, 
Yeah. Enough of cars. <laughs> yeah, enough of cars, enough of Formula One. Yeah. Um, let, let's talk about you. How many minutes are we in now? Um, 50. Fuck. We're 51 minutes in. Oh. We spoke for an hour. I th- I, I know that I, I say this all the time. Like, you know, it's been already been an hour, but this was very fast. One hour. This this one hour was very fast. Yeah. Uh, let Let's talk about um, what do you do? Let's talk about yeah. yeah. Um, let's get so, into the technicals of it. Um, yeah. What do I do, Raghu? I am I am an IIT engineer, Raghu, mm-hmm. who got into something. I basically became an entrepreneur. I worked for a while, then became an entrepreneur, launched my own brand, built a company. Health Sutra. Yeah. Just not name drop. Just do some marketing. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so I run this brand called because. What do I do? Any answer? Je pe dan ki promoting my brand ki difference unta di. Okay. So my point is, uh, so Health Sutra. See, at that in 2013-14, I felt uh, millets are uh, the next biggest thing. So this is where the opportunity is. So I went and I built a company around it, built a brand called Health Sutra. Launched a lot of products in the breakfast and snack food segment. You know. Started from doing, uh, you know, doing ceiling in my apartment mm. by buying bulk from somewhere to setting a factory up. Yeah. Uh, you know, employing probably fifty odd people there, and then from there saw COVID, shut the factory, trimmed down the business, then <laughs> continued the brand business. Now I am for someone else. I am getting a factory done uh, near Sirsilla. So that's a breakfast and snack food factory, yeah. uh, which does your entire breakfast cereals, uh, you know, chips, snacks, all stuff. Basically, uh, snack food and the breakfast cereals, all all kinds, it, it it can be done there. So I they showed me an empty land. I designed the factory from scratch. Uh, then continued uh, licensing with uh, different different uh, subject matter experts where necessary. And then finally, the factory is uh, near completion. I think in two months. Yes. Yeah. Even KTR uh, was there for the inauguration or the, the foundation stone okay. ceremony. Okay. That's nice. Nice. It's unfortunate he's not there anymore <laughs> uh, to probably inaugurate the factory. Okay. Let's see. Someone in the government will come. Okay. Because that's the that's uh, only one factory uh, in that area, like in a fifty kilometer or sixty kilometer radius. There is no factory of this size and scale. So for me, it's a new, unique opportunity. My brand business is there; it's running at a lower level. So I didn't uh, really kill it. Uh, so see, uh, I have, uh, let's say, grown enough in life now to uh, appreciate uh, the both the the bright and the dark sides of uh, life in general. Uh, so yeah, with startup, we always see the bright side with a lot of good companies. Uh, really. Taking off and uh, you know mm-hmm. making money. So now I think uh, at that I was naive. Yeah, I was a I was a noob, so I didn't know much. But all 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 in all, I think a good learning experience. I should say, uh, you know, still there is some value built. I will not be able to unlock it today. So now, if you see, last twenty twenty three was International Year of Millets with Modi feeding G yes. twenty delegates also with millets, uh, yeah. whatever millets or bopping and all that <laughs> very exotically named. Uh, <laughs> stuff uh to them which is very good i am so happy to see millets uh, then because uh, when i started out uh, there's really nothing no one uh it's a unique uh, area in 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 itself yeah let's see i what i've also realized is you know we uh, assets uh which need to be built up will require a right mix of uh kala uh, samaya or you know a lot of things have to come together mm. for you to really unlock the the inherent value that there is and uh, after startup i have now uh, really come to think uh, let's say differently in life itself uh so see i've always been a science geek boss so mm. when i studied uh, newton's uh, laws for the first time my mind blew mm. okay oh because newton's laws were the way of explaining what was already happening yeah. so i already knew no yeah so if the object is there it has so much weight it's hard to push yeah 
that i also knew no, you but that there is a law yeah. uh, so this guy there is a guy who defined laws and these laws are like the basic building blocks of physics mm-hmm. as we know it yeah and oh wow there is a formulaic approach to these things and then i saw those laws and with that so many problems were solved and i thought and yeah, this is how life also works you know for every action there is a reaction uh, and for you know you do this you you get this and then later later as i built the startup and then you know uh, understood the the uh, the uh, you know the crests and troughs <laughs> you keep swimming yeah through the crest to the trough that is the final lesson but that said uh, how do we uh, you know reconcile or how do we go about it is what uh, what Yeah, very f- you know <laughs> philosophical way of looking at things. It's basically a monologue. You just gave me your entire life's monologue. <laughs> I, could, I, I think I could put it that that. No, Raghu Singh. Thing is, how do we how do we go about life? Is what uh, is is more. I am more equanimous now. Mm-hmm. I now subscribe to something called. Uh, so basically, I've realized that life does not work in a Newtonian way, where action reaction. You there is a particular situation. You do something. You don't get the result that you want. and you are worried that you didn't uh, put enough effort to uh, get the result you want you you'll feel guilty right are nen chesina ar avaledu emi kashtapadanu kada so akkadi nunchi then you'll go into a loop of uh, thinking are if it happens it multiple times is it enough is it enough or if it if you feel you put your good amount of effort but still if it doesn't happen you'll start feeling are i am unlucky i am this i am that daridram undi adundi undi so i don't subscribe to that now i think I See, think I'm in that phase. Uh, I'll give an example. I'll let you continue. Mm. Uh, I, okay, sir, at the point I'll I'll sit down for like three hours and edit one twenty second reel or a short video, and then I upload it the next day morning. Thinking, hey, this is gonna be the epitome of what yeah. I've made. This is the greatest edit that I've ever made, and I get like ninety six views, ninety mm. views, compared to the other hundred thousands views that I either get uh, that I get on my other reels. So, yeah, I understand. I think that I'm at that tunnel phase. vision, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> tunnel vision we are so engrossed in what we are doing that we think that is the world same you know this is what formula driven drivers also have how, how can they drive at such high speeds for while having so the mind is accustomed hmm. to such hmm. coming back what i was telling yeah. is yeah, yeah. uh see this there is this guy called sanjeev sanyal okay no. okay hmm. i i i admire him is one of my uh, uh he uh, he by qualification is an economist he comes from a family of freedom fighters freedom fighters like very famous freedom fighters sachindranath sanyal mm. uh so sachindranath sanyal is someone who was put in andaman jail mm. uh you know you do know right like yeah yeah uh, there is a jail called Yeah, I know the Andaman Jail. Yes, so, I know the Andaman Jail. Wait, I'll tell you. Huh. Not problem. I don't know about the names. Truth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, this I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna put a disclaimer. Not during, propaganda. During during British rule, uh-huh. they had many different kinds of jails to host different kinds of prisoners. Convicts. The people who were the most dangerous uh-huh. were thrown in Andaman. Yeah. Okay. So the most famous, well-known guy. who was in andaman i think for 14 15 or some ever number of years is veer savarkar uh, yeah okay yeah. and andaman was so crazy that a lot of movies were made where people were made to in andaman the prisoners were made to lick the boots of the jailers uh and then uh some other time i'll talk to you about how the jailers jailers were indians only hmm okay not all of them were british yeah and the british had a certain way of selecting those jailers I don't want to talk about that today because I don't want to make it more controversial. <laughs> Thing is, they had different people. Yeah. So Sachindra Sanyal was also put in Andaman Jail. That's how organizationally he was. He comes, Sanjeev Sanyal comes from that family, and uh, he is an economist and well, well respected, well cited uh, guy. And then he was then appointed as a principal economic advisor to the finance minister. Hmm. Uh, uh, so he was part of the that Cabinet. team. and then later on uh, he was uh, appointed to 
something called uh, EAC to the PM, Economic Advisory Committee to the PM. So this uh, was when? At what what year? In the last ten years only, this okay. has happened. Like I think mm-hmm. he started engaging uh, in two thousand. Uh, 16 15 from mm-hmm. that time he has been with the ministry yeah very smart mm-hmm. and very well traveled uh, he writes a lot on history okay and his family being uh, so part and economic economics history and then you know life in general he he talks quite nicely and it makes really really good sense his books are beautiful mm-hmm. to read so uh, the reason why Uh, you know in a way uh, the first book i read about uh, 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 of his is uh, this book called uh, the land of seven rivers okay uh, i think everyone should it's a book that everyone i think should read what it is will, it about like give us more about face. the history of our land okay. history of india history the history of the geography of india okay so uh, like lot of things uh, for example you go to in andhra uh, near karnool there is this place called jwalapuram where they found uh, uh, archaeological remains of a of a civilized or rather a, a people uh, who were using they found tools uh, which is buried before below lava hmm. okay so which means it goes back a l- couple of hundreds of yeah. uh, thousands of years yeah. to the very very least yeah okay so he goes around and like talks about history talks about delhi and the history of delhi so we were uh, we were always called sapta sindhu okay what does it mean like that the seven rivers of hindu sindhu okay okay so okay, you, okay. you even now you have uh, the the rivers surviving you know hmm. ravi china bias oh, just Indus. just give me a Big day, nostalgia back to my social ten yeah. class social. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Please, sir. So I, uh, you know, um, uh, so he writes about the geography uh, of that land, you know, uh, which is uh, the land which is uh, to the, between the river Indus now, and there existed a river called Saraswati, hmm. the Ganga Yamuna Saraswati. Saraswati existed, hmm. which flew uh, or sorry, which not flew. which whose course uh. was parallel to the uh, to indus in a way and uh, used to go into sea in uh, uh, near in currently yeah. gujarat so the run of kutch that mm-hmm. you see in gujarat yeah. now is the dried up delta of okay saraswati river okay okay nice. so this is the land okay so these seven rivers so that that's how the name came you know hindu sindhu hindu india hindu indies india it's yeah, all yeah, like yeah, link yeah, no yeah. so sabi came ha as it went to the to the west bank of uh, indus when they go towards uh, iran so then ha becomes a ah, when it reaches the greek land if you now you, if you look at common words also now this is and, how the and, progression and, and, of the language is and, and as as states mare ko the you have similar yeah, yeah, yeah. similarly yeah alaga it's not just with that again if you look at it so there are a lot of that, syllables that yeah. like south indians which we can vocalize through mm-hmm. our vocal cords and the way our vocal cords are constructed which people who are living in the northeast can't even vocalize also we don't hear those uh, uh let's say very basic kind of a mm-hmm. vocalization in the language mm-hmm. the way particular sorry coming to sanjeev sanyal this guy really that book really opened my mind because when upon inchi read the social book try to understand india what the history of india where we came from all of that and then in class 10 uh, the most important question i had was the important question which always uh, came in uh, the exam ssc yeah. exam was yeah. uh, Uh, about uh, a guy called Bismarck, uh-huh. who has united, who has created the Prussian Empire. Okay, okay. so I always thought, "Yar, who the fuck is Bismarck, man? Why am I studying about Bismarck? <laughs> hmm. Don't I have anyone here like uh, Chola's rule for twelve hundred, fourteen hundred years? Hmm. I don't have uh, any important question around Chola's. So this always I had in my mind, and this book actually opened up a lot of thoughts in my head in terms of unanswered questions. So yeah. complexity theory yeah <laughs> i'll close at that i have yeah. this very bad habit of just yeah. going on tangents that that's what this is that's yeah. what the whole podcast so, is so 
So yeah, book recommendation: The Seven Rivers. The La, uh, the Land of Seven. The Land Rivers. of Seven Rivers. Sanjeev Sanyal is the guy. Read yeah. all his books. Yeah. There is this most recent book called Revolutionaries, which is revolutionaries, mind blowing, okay. and uh, all backed by historical evidence, primary sources. Uh, very well written, lucidly written, even for. Instagram generation reels generation suffering with attention deficit <laughs> disorders it is still a recommended read yeah please yeah. do read books once in a while to gain knowledge the only book that made me actually turn the page was uh, all I've read very less number of book the girl on a train yeah it's quite the, nice yeah so good book that's the first fiction book i mean i read only fiction mm-hmm. mostly so every mm-hmm. chapter every uh, thing made me like you know, i want to read the next i want to finish i want to yeah. finish and i read this with manzaka yeah. manzaka had this kindle yeah. uh, it was on there it was just lying there i was and it's like i started reading it and Crazy it was too good too good i don't read fiction anymore ragu and go uh, what i've like probably the brain also is now not uh, has evolved i don't know <laughs> complexity three point of the basic rules is the thread ni what i i was talking about newtonian laws and how we think there is a direct action relationship and complexity theory talk says that it's not how the world works the every you need to look at it as a as if it's a complex system where many variables are at play in which your uh effort is also one of the variables so if you you know if you don't work hard for something the chances of you getting success in that particular activity is, is that, you can take it if you no it's okay. okay is i would say very less but does that mean there there are no people who are uh let's say they, they so there are some people who don't do any effort but still you know, get, get it get the thing you done. sometimes call it luck hmm. okay but It, if you actually try to let's say build a system trying to understand it there are many factors at play so we always say right place right, right time right place at the right time yeah. right place right time right person yeah right door yeah in my startups case right investor yeah but then who decides who the right investor is you will have to figure it out yourself because nothing can beat lived experience so my entire point being uh if i were to explain it in a mathematical way probably it's like a polynomial with uh, many many variables hmm. with uh <laughs> where so many factors keep you know uh changing if so my life would have been very different if uh, covid didn't happen of course my, everyone's life would have been very different if covid didn't happen yeah yeah i am not denying that probably my startup journey would have been uh very different but it's okay uh, i think uh if i i should stop thinking in a linear way saying if i put x amount of effort this will happen if i do this this will happen probably you know tomorrow in a chance meeting uh at a hotel i meet a guy uh who probably is one of the top distributors hmm. in, in india hmm. you can say this is wishful thinking <laughs> there is and people who say it's wishful thinking probably are right in a way of saying that but that said it's not all wishful thinking many things are in play you move in the right circles with the right kind of people where a right introduction can happen which will open a new door yeah and once the new door opens if you are running at let's say 5 kmph now uh, immediately after the door opening you might go up to 50 Yeah. But in your mind, when you are running at five, going to fifty, you will probably think of it as a humongous effort, which would which would require a much more linear amount of effort or money from your end to achieve that. Am I making sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because see, I I'll tell you why. Because I've read a I've read something in some book. I don't remember the name. Uh, it's about Bill Gates. So uh, what I read was. there was this only one school in the entire america where there was a computer and bill gates happened to be in that particular school if he yes. were to for some reason yes. if his parents were to put him in some other school mm. they would have not been uh, mm. microsoft today mm. the world would have been something else mm. so by the way just one disclaimer huh? what i explained no yeah. that is not the 
the explanation of complexity theory as a concept yeah. for that people should it's read your, google it's your purview no i i talk more about my life and how if i try to apply complexity theory and try to understand the situation how it makes sense because it's a complex system hmm. is what i use that yeah, theory yeah, for yeah, yeah. so yeah not bro science please <laughs> yeah. 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 some water is kar yeah yeah so that is how you know we talked about uh, me we talked about complexity theory we talked about sanjeev sanyal and uh, sanjeev sanyal is doing something very interesting now he is doing something called uh, a stitched ship project stitch ship uh so he's doing it with uh, my uh, the project is being done with my 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 alma mater iit delhi okay so iit delhi has a naval construction uh, wing okay so where uh, a lot of navy officers who work along with uh, iit delhi scientists uh on ship designs and stuff like that so they uh so every ship has a hull hmm. like a chassis mm mm-hmm. yes and in the past there was a, there was there was a chassis made of a metal uh and where uh, wood was uh, then uh you know hammered on yeah mm. uh, so it's like mm, let's say in cars if i have to give an example uh, and one side there is a ship with a hull on the other side the ship itself is the hull <laughs> like yeah uh if you have to look at uh, let's say a car like uh, fortuner hmm fortuner is a body on frame vehicle a body on frame okay yeah there uh, is a uh, chassis yeah 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 which has it the, and the suspension components are all connected to the chassis and then body is also everything is built on a chassis and, and, right yeah. so that's why there is engine number chassis number whereas yeah. all modern cars like xuv 500 or uh, 700 and then the your cars even my rapid or any hatchback you take all of them are something called a monocoque construction where it's a single member the the the, the body is the frame itself is the both the, the load bearing it's, it's and the, whole, the yeah. entire uh-huh. thing so a you can consider uh, let's say fortuner like a ship which has a hull chassis is the hull hmm. and the wood parts or metal parts are now welded on to or uh, nailed on to to yeah get that uh, shape and uh, function stitch ship is where wood is bent using steam and other techniques in such a way hmm. and then it is all stitched together using uh, metal using uh, coconut okay. based or jute based ropes and the resin is then applied to seal the entire thing and make it waterproof so the frame is the hull hmm 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 so it's it's a push towards a more efficient uh, no no it depends on the application oh. so in the past india was the leader in uh, stitched ship technology Okay. When I say past, uh, we are looking at fourteen uh, hundreds, thirteen hundreds. No, 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 even older, like okay, fourth, fifth, okay, eighth okay. century AD. We had this technology, which was then transmitted to the Middle East. So uh, Oman, hmm. uh, Dubai, uh, all of these cities, uh, the Arab areas, had a lot of uh, trade and ship uh, building stuff. Yeah. so they had this and then it, it and then after a while we stopped doing it and then like from i think 9th century 10th century onwards the entire sea trade from india was then came into the control of arabs hmm. okay. uh, and then some arab migration happened but this we will take up in some other yeah. podcast <laughs> some <Yeah>. other day <laughs> yeah i think already stitch ship yeah stitch ship no yeah so yeah Uh, so he is trying to now uh, build a large scale uh, stitch ship which through uh, with which he wants to not him but like competent uh, sailors hmm. will be undertaking a voyage around the world to test the robustness because the stitch ship no when it's tip there is some is going to be some uh, it's not going to be very rigid it's not going to be like uh, this mm-hmm. You see, there's going to be some sway because wood is a naturally, you know, in terms of uh, yeah, flexible. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. 
uh, more more tensile uh, that are flexible yeah, yeah that's the word yeah so uh, they want to try and uh, test the technology out i found it really interesting and unique because i'm going to look up uh, he has gone to a uh, lot of uh, texts uh, by someone i think called raja boja on whose name the city bhopal mm-hmm. is named okay so this raja boja guy had a had a samhita of some sorts where he described the construction methods techniques so they have built a small model in iit madras in iit madras they have built a tank and mm. in that tank they have tested the model which as a as an army tank No, what no, you, you water that? tanks. Okay. For for testing. Acha, acha, acha. Arey, why would they do an Ar- army yeah, tank yeah, for yeah, sorry, just a little ships, man? I think you uh, never know whether I mean what? not not for ships or not, leh. Uh, so I'm saying what, they built a water tank in which they put the ship and they like uh, they can create waves and to see how it works, yeah. stuff like that. So I find that uh, you know always been very nerdy. Ha ha, understand. Raghu, yeah. I have always been very nerdy, so <laughs> stuff like this. somehow i keep yeah. liking yeah yeah uh, i think it's been a great uh, one hour minutes i want to end this uh, on a note about your life at iit delhi uh, i believe you are the most qualified person on this podcast most qualified guest uh, on this podcast at the moment <laughs> of all the 15 episodes yeah. so uh, just give us a glimpse of how uh, your life at iit delhi was how has been how has it been an impact if you may yeah uh, see i think uh, uh, the time has been amazing no no denying i think uh, i owe a lot of what i am today to the institute no denying that that said uh, i think uh, a lot of learning comes from the kind of peer group you also have hmm. so uh, the the average level of uh, work that a lot of people there put in is already very high yeah. so you will also be by default you have to you have a good head start into no that is after iit okay. i am talking about life at iit first okay okay so yeah overall it's a fairly i think it's not as rigorous as people think it is you have you have good enough time to do sport activities and stuff uh so that and even your achievements in sport and other activities are also Uh, considered and valued when you are appearing for campus placements yeah so of course uh, campus placement wise uh, being the top institutes yeah of course there is good companies coming uh, good you know but that said you have a lot of alumni people coming people going the exposure you get the yes. skills you learn the networking so that happens i studied my degree was called electrical engineering <laughs> i studied electronics and communication engineering my final engineering project was on what you would call now artificial intelligence mm mm-hmm. yeah so ML. yeah mm. so uh we were mostly in image processing and trying to do so it was with samsung okay oh, well. i quite enjoyed that project then i uh, completely switched away from core and then moved into an education company for a while exceed was exceed, it exceed yeah yeah so then yeah worked there for a while then the entrepreneurship bug put bit me and then got into this when you no know, in a way the life's boat uh, <laughs> keeps you know you keep rowing it forward yeah that's how it is different tides the yeah, are, are it's so boring yeah it's uh, that's how it is yeah you have to like uh, you like you probably a uh, lot of movies influencers whatever porn all these stuff will give you a very uh, twisted perception of hmm. what the world reality is. is so now i keep thinking if i like once i have kids i like try to make them as grounded as possible to like at least like even if there is a very complicated electronic circuitry hmm. it requires a very good uh, grounding to function properly so okay that was deep i would say <laughs> yeah. uh, well uh, in that case uh, let's let's end this it's been 1 hour 20 minutes uh, yeah. yeah i remember so we have this uh, small tradition on the pod where the guest from the previous I like the episode new name. The, oh yeah you know the you remember the I old name right one. 
Yeah. We ran with it for like two episodes, and then we realized that uh, okay. I should have asked what the cursing policy on the podcast <laughs> is like. I should have uh, not cursed once or twice that I did. Oh no, they, they, uh, you should you should see some of, some of my other podcasts. Yeah, they, I don't know zero uh. zero policy. It can be as candid as possible. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So and that, you, that's you have I, your tradition. Yeah. So my tradition was that uh, the guest from the previous is also the longest. Uh, one hour. Thirty-five. You could yeah. say that was. We'll do one more episode. Uh, yeah. Raghu, I'll, I'll talk about my favorite topic. Spiritualism. No. No. That also we can talk. Yeah. But because I am I, fascinated to I have zero knowledge on that, so that that is where I will be just sitting and trying to take down notes. I believe. So <laughs> I want to do that. I need to take notes. <laughs> yeah. We'll talk. I want to talk also about history. I huh. read quite a bit. You know, a lot of very new, unique stuff. We should do I that. Keep yeah. reading, yeah. We'll we'll keep, but I think let's hope. Uh, we'll keep reiterating this. Uh, let's hope I'll I'll come back. Uh, yes. Let's see if this gets views for you. Yeah. Um, we just Then, spoke about it. We, it doesn't matter if we get if we uh, get views. It doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah. We had fun. I had fun doing it, and yeah. I'm satisfied for that today. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter tomorrow if I get views. Yeah. That's the whole idea that I started this channel. Mm. I I uh, I manifested this from two years. Covid, I did some blogs. Mm. I was like, uh, what I'm going to do with this channel? Maybe I'll make some podcast. Mm. I said that. Now down the line, two years later, the English language podcast. manifestation and that. Telugu lo, I think, Danny Sankal Pumandar. Okay. <laughs> okay. Which we actually say before every puja, you know? Yeah. Mm. So the question. Uh, tradition, yes. Uh, the tradition is that the guest from the previous episode uh, asks the question to the next guest of the podcast. Yeah. So he obviously the whoever it was they had no idea who the next guest was. So it's obviously a very generic question, and you're supposed to do the same thing with the you. You just give me a question and I'm going to ask it to the next guest. So you are going to first ask what the previous yeah yeah. Was. So he asked yeah. if you could just do one thing in the in the entire world, uh, and just stop everything other anything else. Uh, maybe it could be your work, your food, whatever you like. It you could just do one thing in the entire world. What would that be? Nothing. Nothing. We just say nothing. No, I will not do nothing. Okay. There is no one thing. No, but but there has to be something. If you, something that you like, out of in the entire whole world, something. You know, okay, this is fine. If I'll survive until hundred hundred years with this, I'm okay with this. I won't get bored. Could there be something? Or it's humanly impossible okay. to achieve that. I subscribe to that philosophy. There okay. is no one thing. See, if you were to ask, have me, you subscribed to the pod? Sorry, have you subscribed to the pod? Yeah. I have. Okay, no, I was trying to make a joke. You said you subscribe to that philosophy, and okay, <laughs> uh, it 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 it, uh, <laughs> it clearly did not land. <laughs> okay. So, Emily Raghu, I so I'm sorry. I'm I want I don't want to give a philosophy on oh, this. Oh, please also. do it. Stop it. But thing is, see, I am now a bit older now than you, so hmm. I have now come to a bit. Bit more, I come to realize that no such thing exists which a person can continue doing for his entire life. Because after a while, if mango is the most favorite food, the first time you made the sweetest mango, hmm. you as a kid would have thought that I can continue eating <laughs> mangoes only for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for my entire life. Uh huh. Then what happens? Something called law of diminishing marginal utility happens, where you will, or basically, what happens is you will go, you will go, bo- you will grow bored. So people say idle mind is devil's workshop. If you are doing something, hmm. right? If you are doing something, after a while you are so used to it and you become such a expert at it. Hmm. Okay, that that will then become your. Place baseline of equilibrium that's your baseline and from the, that and then you will feel you are bored now what happens then you will be unhappy so for a poor person his entire goal in life is wanting to become rich he wants money and then he'll be happy if you go ask him bas life mein 1 crore ho jaye sir yeah i'll be happy mummy papa ka ye karunga बच्चों के लिए करूंगा आई एल बी हैप्पी बट ऑन दी अदर साइड यू हैव पीपल हुव मनी बट हुर एक्सट्रीमली अनहैप्पी बिकॉज हैविंग मनी इज 
so my entire point here is basically it's, it's always, all it's always relative it. yeah it's always relative but if since you have asked me the question what i want to continue doing in my if there is is there one thing you want to continue hmm. doing in your life yeah. till your 100 i want to continue running i like to run okay. i want to continue running till whenever it's humanly possible because it makes my mind calm i like it i enjoy the experience of no phone nothing just me on my feet i feel it's like meditative so i want to do something like that but normally doing just meditation sometimes is a bit difficult for me uh, but doing running and uh, there is no thought it's similar you only focus is like one step after the other i like that i want to continue doing that okay so yeah, just before we end it just i want to circle back a little bit on the the establishing a baseline like you know you've done something and that's your baseline now uh, now there's you get bored again so there i am no establishing hmm. your systems will get used to it yeah so that's what's happening to me right now at this moment for so a scooter driver ha huh. probably driving at 40 is his baseline for a car driver driving at 100 is his baseline for a formula 1 driver driving at 250 is his baseline yeah yeah that's how your response times are calibrated okay. that's how you know that's how so it, it, that's happening with me right now when i started the podcast i had so much to build i had to buy this i had to buy the camera i had to f- figure out my editing stuff i have to figure out my software but now that everything is set it's it has it has become a little bit redundant like you know okay i'm doing it i'm shooting i'm going back i'm editing i'm uploading so kya naya kya hai isme so i'm trying to find that uh, what's new what's new what's new what's new? i'm still in search of it uh you could say i'm still trying to grow i am new today yeah that, that's that's the thing <laughs> i love this i love talking to new people i love it i love talking to people but the moment i go home i'm still in, i'm sitting in the same system i'm sitting in the same software i'm still editing the same stuff so just but you have to you know this that is what rigor is also ragu life flow you have to no matter mm-hmm. wherever whatever you do okay uh you'll have to have some sort of a repetitive that that is because that is what will give you your keep your uh, bank account ringing and that's your bread and butter yeah that's it, what will keep your bank account bank and ringing so that all your needs are met yeah and then if you can find a i feel you can have some sort of a some some rigor going it can it can be a job or something and some passion project also going depending on how how hectic your job is it can be a, a let's say i don't want to put numbers because it doesn't work like that hmm. but let's say something like a 80 20 80 percent you spend your time there 20 percent of the time you spend your time on passion project but then if you are someone who is more creative and wants to be freer choose a job which is less intensive where you you can do 50 50 hmm. yeah so one mistake i made uh, in my startup also always has been to you know have that uh, plan b going or some sort of a or i think if it that didn't happen i wouldn't i wouldn't have learned so that also it's all circular my man <laughs> yeah all right so it's all circular on that note uh, we could uh, we can end this I podcast i should ask the next yeah you, you shouldn't you should guest. say it on camera just you can text me later on whenever i'll like, ah, okay let's yeah, so, end yeah. this and yeah yeah so how has your experience been uh, is this your first podcast that you have been on it's my second ragu oh live first okay first one was more a uh, you know they had a studio and i connected online okay uh, so in that podcast we talked about uh, ayurveda psychedelics trekking himalaya spirituality trekking and himalayas that that should be something next for next minute to talk about yeah for the next one yeah yeah so all right on that note thank the you so much the experience has been very good yeah yeah i i really hope the best for you i think uh, get keep getting good guests yes i hope you'll hit i hope this video gets you the yes. most views let's see Let, let's i'm very really competitive that way <laughs> <laughs> let's beat 1.1k that's the target at the moment yeah yeah yeah, yeah. all right then thank you so much all the best and we'll, uh, we'll, bye bye uh,